When you talk about Tony's style, it's totally original and identifiable. It's almost a personal culture. He has invented a lifestyle. It's, when you talk about Tony, you're talking about the art of living and the living art. Tony will use anything that will help him capture the quality he is seeking. You know, what he finds in the street, what he finds in the cellar, in the attic, on the seashore. Um, seashells, feathers, bones, antlers. He calls it natural Baroque, which is, actually, is much more charming in some way. And his public responds to it, I mean, in his exhibitions, because it's recognizable and it, it makes it so much more accessible and so much less serious. This is uh, an area right off the dining room. It's a covered terrace, and uh, he's covered it with lattice to make it a uh, shaded and dappled sunlight effect. The, uh, the structure is supported by old um, street lamps that are bronze uh, fluted columns that were thrown out. He's sort of the king of, of the found object, and he's a great recycler. In fact, most of the plants in the garden have been recycled. He, he goes for walks in the alleys of Beverly Hills, and he picks up uh, plants that uh, gardeners have thrown out. Um, he's crazy about succulents and bromeliads and plants that don't need a lot of care. It's, it's interesting because it's almost all in pots, if you look closely, and there's wonderful pots. There's ceramic pots from, from the Orient, and then there's just plastic uh, containers that he's taken lace and put lace around them and sprayed them with gold. He sees beauty. When Tony saw this property in 1949, he immediately saw the potential. Whereas his neighbors have filled in the ravine to build tennis courts and swimming pools, he's created different levels and filled them with pavilions. This is the dining pavilion in the garden. It has a wonderful glass top table on a base of gnarled grape roots. The actual structure is built around two uh, pine trees that are about 150 feet tall. And Tony has claimed some land by cantilevering the pavilion over the ravine. He has uh, old shutters that he's salvaged from a wrecking yard. To, uh, he can close to get rid of the wind on occasion. There's a wonderful Tony Duquette designed chandelier in bronze, and even a, a carpet on the ground. It's a great place for dining at night. And on each side, a pair of his phoenix rising from their flames sculptures, which he made for the Arm & Hammer Museum when he was 80 years old, a huge exhibition that he created after his uh, property in Malibu burned to the ground in one of the Malibu fires. Below this courtyard level, Tony transformed a drab, brown shingled structure into a fantasy guest house. Tony's turned it into a Southeast Asian fantasy. He's put uh, English spires on the roof, English Gothic spires, and he's then right next to them, he's put Balinese bird cages. Also, he's added the plastic fencing that they, they fi you find along freeways to hold the hillsides from slipping. He's covered the columns with gold lame dress fabric and then shellacked it so that they look like they're all gold leafed and, and patterned with intricate designs. And there's mirrored carvings from Thailand. And then even something we call the freeway, which sort of leads back down to, to another section of the garden where Honey's wife had her painting pavilion. The sculpture over the pool began with an old metal bridge-like structure from an Army Navy store. Tony has transformed it by covering the surface with skateboards, spent shells, a whale vertebrae, and the crowning jewel, a reflector from a street maintenance sign. I think that we coined a term, it's called the Tao of Decoration, the T-A-O. You follow the path of least resistance. You just let it happen. You don't go out looking for a garden chair or a garden sculpture or a pavilion. It, it'll come to you. You know, when the, when the deer is ready to be shot, it will come into the forest. So Tony just lets it happen and, and things materialize. It's very magical. It's, it's a strange thing. And, uh, you know, Tony, he has one, one foot planted firmly in the air. For Tony Duquette, more is definitely more. Fear is not a word in Tony Duquette's vocabulary. A lifetime of work, including this magical garden, attests to a unique vision, a style that can only be called Duquette. It makes everything he does one of a kind, including a Beverly Hills ravine that has been rebuilt as Xanadu.
There's Tony in 1951 in front of his show at the Lou. There's his wife at the wedding. There's LCD Wolf. Oh, that's... They were married at Pickfair. Mary Pickford was the matron of yeah. honor. Buddy Rogers was the best man. Here, he did all the decorating for Cobina Wright, the Hearst, uh, the Hearst, the Hearst columnist. Yeah, yes. There's Tony with uh, Susie Parker. Susie Parker, the famous yeah. Chanel model. Yeah. There's his poster for the Louvre show. He was the first American to have a one-man show at the Louvre in Paris in 1951, wow. and he was selected to represent the decorative arts of the mid 20th century, which was adorable. Amazing. And at that exhibition, he designed a necklace for the Duchess of Windsor, which was exhibited then. Mm -hmm. It was the first piece of jewelry he ever made. This is the necklace that I noticed Raquel Welch wore to the Oscars last March. So this is sort of an Aztec bib, uh, inspiration Inca, Mexican. Tell us about the inspiration for this necklace. Well, the, we get our inspiration from the stones. Oh. And we rarely make drawings. We take the stones, stick them on a Xerox machine, and, and, oh, and then brilliant. we fill in the gold. Oh, like a puzzle, like a jigsaw like puzzle. Like a jigsaw puzzle, like a Chinese puzzle. And this is such a fabulous piece. And it's, I, I don't know how many, maybe a couple thousand carats worth of stone. It was in Vogue magazine this yes, month, yes, which we yes, adore. Yes, yes, absolutely. I really feel that we're one of the few interior design, architectural design people who have successfully transferred to fashion. You um, did, and in a Fashion people way. are going into home decor all the time, but we've come the other direction, which I think is rare. <laughs> Nothing was too much trouble for mm -hmm. Tony. And he woke up every day and he just did something creative. He just did something. You never knew what was going to happen Designed a next. piece of jewelry, but a mirror. Al but also always at the last minute. And yeah. he'd be giving a party and saying, we're going to have a Chinese ballet on the stage tonight. He was sort of like Martha Stewart on crack with a glue gun. Oh. <laughs> you know? Now, I just want to know about uh, how you met Tony Duquette. I used to play with my art teachers, what would you do if you were Tony Duquette? Just me and the teachers. And, and what did you do with the art teacher? Well, we just used to play Tony Duquette. We used to do all kinds of what things. What, did you dress up like Tony Duquette? No, 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 no. We would do a projects, and I would say things like, oh, we're going to do this whole thing in leopard skin, and the teacher would say, well, Tony Duquette invented leopard skin. One day, the teacher put a note in my locker saying Tony was looking for volunteers, so I quit my school, quit my job, and went to work for Tony for, for two years as a volunteer, and then for three years at $50 every two weeks. $50 every two weeks. And then I ended up owning the company, so there you are. You should turn that into a pill box. That would be a lovely little well, pill box next. for the ladies who have lunch, and then they must take their little pills out. This is almost the Cartier of the 30s. Yeah. It's a put-together piece using using some antique elements. Oh, the antique elements yeah. are that. Yes, which yeah, exactly. And Tony liked to re recycle. This is an old Tony piece, so he liked to recycle old old things. But do, do you ever get customers who see another one of their best friends at lunch wearing something, and they come to you and they say, "I want to they have the same pin." They can't have it. They can't have no, it. No, we you don't. You won't make. It's always one of a kind. I don't understand why anyone would want to make two of anything. There's so many ideas. There's well, so you many know, original ideas. You might ideas. want to have two of these. You might want to have four. If you bought one, I'd make you a second one. Because that you need to. But have. I won't you make need one. To have one on the left and one on yeah, the right. But I won't make one for your best friend. Now, how do you get?